I think first about the moment when the moon landing took place itself. I was at my son's place. We were sitting on the front lawn and had the television set in front of us and watched the landing. At that time, we were all in a sort of euphoria, the culmination of all the work that had been going on before. And we had absolute confidence that the landing would work. Only in retrospect, later, it dawned on me the enormity of this event. It didn't dawn on us while it happened, because we were so involved in it. We were in it. It had to work, and it did. We had great confidence that the landing would be successful. After all, our highest authority, Werner von Braun, said so. I was the main developer of the launch facilities. The crawler, which transported the Saturn, the tall umbilical tower, the vertical assembly building, and then the launch machinery itself. My patent was the whole pull-down mechanism that kept the Saturn V on the launch pad while all the engines were firing. But check out. <clears throat> At that time, we didn't have computers. We did things with a slide rule. We had uh, central computers for flight mechanics, but where I worked <clears throat> in the development of the whole launch machinery and launch equipment. We didn't. We had large groups of designers, which we supervised. The fascinating thing about it was there was no precedent. There was no precedent on what we were doing. No how-to books. So out of our own imagination and and uh, ideas, we had to form what later became the hardware that we are familiar with. We had a bunch of very, very creative people. We had not only had to work accurately, we had to work fast. Because, as you remember, we wanted to launch to the moon before the decade was over. There were many problems to overcome. But we had confidence in ourselves. We never doubted that we couldn't do it. We never doubted. It was just a certain amount of work that had to be done. We worked long hours. Um, and it paid off. So the methods of, of managing a group to come up with all the concepts and the final design for other launch hardware were in place. And everybody gave his best. We had a certain common enthusiasm. A certain atmosphere was within our organization. That was just super. Very great enthusiasm. Um, everybody gave his best without being coaxed. Uh, we all worked for a common goal. We realized we did, we did something. We were about to do something that is never done before. And like I said before, only in retrospect, I personally recognized the enormity of the whole undertaking. The idea to go to the moon, to send people to the moon, originated decades before, not only after Kennedy announced our intentions, decades before that, when we were young people, we were rocket enthusiasts. And the moon, of course, was the obvious first target in space. So we were mentally oriented toward this mission. In Peenemünde, during World War II, secretly, we developed a moon rocket on paper. It had to be secret because we were not supposed to do it here. 
but we had to build weapons. So the irony was when we came to the United States, we again had to build weapons. And our success later was based again on something that we did in secret, which was in this case, designing and building satellites. Everybody was happy that we did it later. <clears throat> but our moon plans were always there. And when the go ahead came, we knew exactly what to do. Runner from Brown included many qualities in one person. He was a great scientist, engineer, a great politician, a great le a born leader. And he had something that I wish every manager would have. He had a great sense of humor. It could be very funny. The main thing is we trusted him without limits. He was a true leader of a team. He had the goal and he had the de determination to follow it. And he had the team to carry it out. He was very easy to work with. He was very people-minded. His doors were always open. When mistakes were made and admitted, the one who did the mistake was getting an award. That was his style of management. Openness, complete trust among the team and between him and the team. Well, one obvious uh, part of our present program are the launch facilities. We use the same crawler that carried the Saturn V to carry the shuttle. We have the same vertical assembly building to prepare the shuttle before launch. Then we had in the Saturn days. Philosophically, much has been lost, I think, after the Apollo days. My personal opinion is, is not much has been transferred from our Apollo experience to the shuttle experience. And I think events have shown that. While the first moon landing was going on, we were already preparing for a follow-up program. It was called the Integrated Space Program. It was initiated by George Miller in NASA headquarters. I was involved in laying out the elements of this program. Uh, the content of the follow-on program was, of course, number one, a shuttle, a reusable shuttle, a space station, <clears throat> a base on the moon, and a base on Mars. The interesting thing about this program, all these elements, these program elements were derivatives of the Saturn V. The stages of the Saturn, the hardware of the Saturn program was modified to build lunar bases and Mars bases. One new thing was a shuttle, like I said, and a nuclear shuttle between Earth and Mars. So a rather grandiose program. Of course, all these plants died except the space shuttle, as you know. It's the only piece of that grandiose plan that survived. So we were quite busy thinking about post-Apollo. There was one thing that had changed, though, the public perception of space. There was no more support for any large missions. And this did the integrated space program in for good. I think we all felt that the Apollo moon landing was one of the greatest events in the area of technology and science of mankind. I think it parallels the building of the pyramids and other great works of humans. It was the first step out of the earth to another heavenly body. This whole project had an enormity about it 
that many people, like I said before, did not perceive until it was all done. There was a Vietnam War going on, the infamous Vietnam War, that drained all the resources, not only economically, but also any, any idealistic resources in the American people. I don't think that if Kennedy would have lived, that we would have done much more than we would have done than we did, because the political scenery had changed so drastically. It had an influence, but a delayed influence, because the program had enough momentum to go on during these political upheavals that we had in our country. It had enough momentum to carry us through to Apollo 17, its effect was delayed. Apollo 18 was scrubbed, canceled. And thereafter, you know what happened, nothing. So these factors did have an influence. Fortunately, it delayed influence. Rocket people historically have been non-politicians. They didn't care much about politics. They were tied and almost married to their work with great enthusiasm. They cared very little, right or wrong, about political scen scenery that went on around them. That can be said even during World War II, when we developed the V2. We were enthusiastic rocket people and fascinated by our work and cared very little about what went on around us. And the same thing happened, I think, during the 60s and early 70s, when there was turmoil in the United States. Uh, we were zeroing in on our work, our work. We were 100% dedicated, almost single-minded.